Hey everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Coffee Time with Mr. Ying, with your host Mr. Ying. And today we're going to be talking about a very fun episode. We're going to be building a small app. It's called a Shiny app. It's backed by Python. And then in the middle of the app, we're going to hook it up with our ChatGPT engine and let's see what we can do. So with that being said, let's get started by having our first sip of coffee today. Here we are. Let's go. So. Let me take your attention to this app and let me just show you what this app is doing right now. Uh, so here I have a button on the left hand side. It's the submit button. And then in the middle, I have this prompt allowing the user to enter either Chinese or English, some sort of prompt. Let me just start with entering a bird is flying in the air. And then I can come back to the left, hit the button. And then you see that here we have a process prompt in English it says bird is flying in the air. And then we have a picture that kind of looks like a bird, but not quite because the head is not in the right place. Maybe the tail doesn't look right, right? But on a high level, it kind of looks like a bird in the air. So that's kind of the idea. And then that's kind of like the purpose of this app, which is to allow user to interact with ChatGPT to create a picture based on whatever imagination that you could have. So here, I actually make two API calls. First one is this section here. Whatever user enter, I kind of want to correct the grammar a little bit, right? Because here I want to allow user to enter both languages. Then obviously there's a lot of variety of different inputs that the user can enter. So first API call is to really make sure that the prompt is correct. It looks correct grammatically and it makes some sense. Now, of course, if user intend to enter something that's nonsense, then the picture will probably be nonsense. But if it's a common object, cats, birds, dogs, I believe that the technology right now that we have should be able to produce high level quality images without any problem. So let's create another one. I could probably say a cat is sitting in front of a fireplace. And I hit enter, boom, there you go. Uh, first of all, we correct the grammar just a little bit and then we give it an actual picture. So there you go, that is the idea. Now, let me dive into the code a little bit just to show you guys what the code look like. Now, obviously, we're not going to turn this into a Python lecture, but I just want to kind of point to the important step that's required for this app to exist. So let's start with libraries, right? NumPy that handles the data, handles the array. Matplotlib that allows me to handle the pictures. Typing is to allow me to have type hints so I know what kind of functions that I'm looking at. And then in addition, I have Shiny, right? Shiny is the front. Uh, it builds a user interface, uh, the things that you see, such as a prompt, a text box, a button. Those are the things that you use Shiny to develop. And then on top of that, I have OpenAI. That is the library that you install. Uh, if you don't know how that works, you can go to the OpenAI library to install from there. That allows you to be able to call the OpenAI function. And of course, inside of the function, you will have to have your API key. I'm not going to show my API key here, so I hit it. But in your app, of course, pick a location that's safe, enter the API key from the website of OpenAI. And there you go. You have the ability to make API calls to interact with the function. The first function that I need is this thing called a Chinese to English. It accepts a prompt. In this case, it's a string. User can type in whatever they want. It can be both Chinese and English. And these strings will be concatenated with this prompt here in line 42. It says translate the following Chinese into English if the thing is Chinese. Or if not, then just correct the grammar, right? So that's kind of like what it does. And that's the first API call I'm making. Essentially, this function will take whatever the user enters and get it in the right form of English that I can use for the next step. This arrow here means that the function returns a string. And that's precisely what I'm returning as a final answer. So there you go, that's the first function. The second piece of information is I want to create an actual picture, right? So how to do that, right? The first function I need to use is a URL to image function. The URL to image function will take a string that is your URL, it's a website or web address, and then it will return a NumPy array. So the reason I have to do this is because the OpenAI API will spit out a URL it will not spit out the image directly. And the image is saved in that URL that 
once you call, you can access to that picture. And this function is kind of like a helper function to allow me to go into a URL to grab that image and convert it into some sort of NumPy array so that I can plot the picture, I can change the color, I can do whatever I want. So that is the helper function there, pretty fine. Now I'm making a second API call. Uh, you can see here as an openai.image, that's the second API call that I'm making to call a function developed from OpenAI. So I make this call, I simply say, hey, I want one picture, that's my prompt. And the prompt is whatever user entered, clean up. And then that's the size of the picture I want, 1024 by 1024. And then it's gonna give me a response. This response, unfortunately, is not a picture. It's a URL, so what that means, it's a website. And I have to use my helper function that I defined above to grab the image from that website. So essentially, I'm going to this URL to grab that picture. And boom, there you go, that returns a picture. And this helper function is amazing because it converts it into a NumPy array, which then I can do some post-processing. So there you go, that's all the functions that is required. It's one helper function, two API calls, and you're done. Now, with that being said, I need to define the user interface. So the user interface here is called UI. That is the Shiny portion, right? The Shiny portion originally is developed for our language. But for this use case, unfortunately, it has a Python version. So I just took the Python version and gave it a shot, right? So here we go. We have a UI. That's a user interface. And I'm telling the computer, say, hey, I want a picture that perhaps there's some navigation bar, right? Uh, one navigation bar is for something else. And the other navigation bar is for image generator. And that's precisely what I want. So the previous portion, I can hide that out. And this is the navigation bar that's for image generator. Uh, so as you can see, I set up a layout sidebar. So that gives me that sidebar. I can throw in a button in there. Uh, here, this UI says input action button. And that's precisely what gives me that button on the left hand side. And then we have this panel. That is the central piece of the user interface. And I need to have a couple of things. The first thing I need to have is an input text area that allows the user to enter whatever text they want. Of course, it could be Chinese as well as English. So the next two piece is the output from ChatGPT, right? So when ChatGPT is giving me some sort of prompt or some sort of image or whatever output it's giving me, I got to give a space for ChatGPT to make that presentation. So that's precisely what these two lines are doing. The first line says UI, that means user interface. And then it says output text verbatim. So this means the text version of whatever it's giving me, right? Because the first helper function, I asked ChatGPT to translate Chinese into English. If the user enter Chinese, if the user enter English, then uh, correct the grammar mistake, right? So the return of that is going to be a, a string, uh, essentially a chunk of text. So that's why here it says output text verbatim. In addition, it can, of course, be a plot, right? Because image is a plot. And whatever that picture that I grab from that URL, I process that into NumPy array, and now I'm going to plot a picture. Now, plotting a picture is going to be a different thing than printing the text. So it's not going to be verbatim. It's going to be output plot. So there you go. Those are the front end that's required. And of course, you have your key that can track which location of the front end that you're designing to do. Now it's a server side, right? The server side essentially tells the computer, hey, those user interface that you just designed, now you got to do something with it. And specifically, you have all these helper functions, ChatGPT functions that you define above. Now is the time that you hook them up so that these front end could be backed by the functions that you just defined. So I already have the function defined down here. The Chinese to English output, and that is this portion. And this portion, of course, I call the function that's defined above. And I make sure that the input of the Chinese to English function that I coded above is precisely what the user entered. And that's the important piece. Now, of course, this is going to uh, save it as something, right? And then whatever it is that I saved, obviously, I'm presenting that onto that verbatim portion of the text that's in the user interface. Now here we go, there's a second piece. The second piece is defined here. First thing first is I make an API call to translate Chinese into English, and then I create a picture. Now, of course, for those of you who are experienced, you might be able to tell that this is actually not very optimized 
because here we go, I make a call to this function twice, which in reality, there's better ways to do it. But here, I don't really care about time, I just want things to work, so I kind of go with the hard way. Uh, if you have a sharp eye and your engineering background, you should be able to tell that, hey, uh, whatever this function runs, let's save that as output, uh, you could potentially call it downstream in the code. And that's the right way to think about things if you're able to go there. And then in the end, you just run the app and boom, there you go, you have a website. You can deploy on Shiny website or you can just run locally. So for me, I deploy on Shiny app. Obviously there's a URL, it's a public available URL. And then your family, friends, network can of course go on that website to check out the app and see what it does. So hope you like this video I hope you enjoy it. More things to come about ChatGPT. And me personally, I like playing around with this kind of stuff. If you have new ideas, feel free to let me know. Drop your idea in the comment below and I'll make sure to check it out. Thanks everyone. If you like the channel, give a like and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next episode.